We've come to our final speaker. Dr. Janice Swab has been on faculty for many years. She claimed to have retired, and she did that um, on an economic basis, but she certainly didn't do that in terms of spreading her knowledge. She is a botanist. Um, she has taught children from this high to taller than I. Um, she has traveled the entire world. At one point, she decided to follow Darwin and his trail all around the world. Um, she has um, influence. She was, she was in Russia on a Fulbright scholarship. Um, she epitomizes, um, I think she epitomizes what we all want to be in terms of scholars. Um, she, and she loves sharing that with others, and that has, is what has made her an incredible teacher. Um, she's also a wonderful mentor um, to many, many science students. Um, so we are just thrilled to be able to end our program with Dr. Janice Swan. Today I'm speaking on mindful of nature. <clears throat> Look around this auditorium and you will see that it is built to sequester the participants away from the natural world. Imagine the space where you spend most of your time. For students, it is maybe a typical classroom. Imagine this space. How much attention is given to any meaningful connection with the outside world? Is it possible in your imagined space to see what's going on around you using only natural light? And if so, students, how much of that time is spent with the shades drawn so that visuals can be shown? Now think about this question. What is my concept of nature? Close your eyes if you need to, because you're not going to get uh, a lot of inspiration by looking around here. Keep whatever you thought of in mind as we proceed. As we rush headlong into a reality that is increasingly virtual, has nature become something out there as opposed to in here? Something that we see from where we sit behind a glass, whether it be in a room, a train, a car, a plane? Is our view of nature, of TV specials, where experts explain to us what is going on out there, implying that the audience can actually experience nature by viewing these specials? Or are we attracted to extreme nature programs, and they do exist, as we are to extreme sports events because we have to, so little appreciation of the, gen, of the natural world that it must be jazzed up to get our attention. Why do we take great interest in the possibility of Sasquatch while ignoring the possibility that we might see a woodchuck? Do we even bother nowadays to look up from whatever form of communication we have in our hands to pay attention to our surroundings at all? Are we losing the ability to think about the great outdoors, which is a concept to which nature has been trivialized? Are we already unable to see our nature void? I use nature void as a general term to describe the disconnect between ourselves and nature. Why does Sasquatch? capture our attention, but not a gray fox. Recent generations saw nature as forces to be overcome. They used whatever weapons, chemical, mechanical, whatever, uh, to wipe out and get the upper hand over nature. But today, don't we continue to do the same things? 
<clears throat> using ever more powerful weapons and look around and think that somehow we have won the battle against nature. Great storms, massive floods, and huge fires remind us over and over of the lessons that we do not learn. But I suggest there are more basic, personal reasons why we must be mindful of nature. A few examples may stimulate our thinking. We live surrounded by a built world based on right angles. <clears throat> Look around at any room, the corners, the door frames. Where do we see these right angles in nature? How is our thinking influenced by seeing them everywhere that we look? Perhaps we are admitting that something is amiss when we talk about thinking outside the box. Recently, noise pollution, the mechanical noises that we're increasingly subjected to, has become a topic of concern. What might the sounds that we voluntarily surround ourselves with be doing to us? Before the past few hundred years, humans had experienced only the sounds of nature. Today, if we are asked to identify the sounds of nature, we may have to think before we can answer. Do any of the beeps, clicks, hums, and other sounds, you know what they are, add to our well-being? Do we even realize that these artificial sounds have replaced the sounds of nature? How many of us experience the beauty of the dawn chorus as the birds awaken to the first light? Do we know the sounds of a summer evening? Light surrounds us but who among us is remotely adjusted to nature's light regimes or even accustomed to natural light? Indeed, natural light is something we've come to fear and see as something that we must protect ourselves against. Do we realize how the quality of the light we live under can affect our sleep patterns and our general health? The night sky that was once an inspiration is no longer even possible to view in many areas. Who among us has seen the Milky Way and understands why the road of milk was so named? Why does it require a power outage over large areas for us to realize the glory that shines above us each night? Who among us observes the phases of the moon or the path of the sun across the sky during the year? Why do we think we can save daylight by arbitrarily changing the time twice a year for reasons we can't even remember? Do we look for the sunrise and sunset each day? Do we think about the effects of the rapidly moving images on screens that children are so attracted to? When did we last feel the texture of a leaf? When did we last give our attention to the smell of a fragrant twig or the smell of a local woodland in autumn? Who walks in the rain for the sheer joy of feeling the drops? Can we smell the rain? Or do we only smell wet concrete or an oily roadway? And can we tell the difference? How many of us have ever smelled smoke? Nature is infinitely more complex, presenting more mysteries to be solved than even the most challenging puzzles. Why are children allowed to lose their interest in nature as they mature? Why do we allow ourselves and our children to be deprived of the potential of nature to soothe our spirits? 
restore our energies, cheer our outlooks, and strengthen our resolves to improve our lives. Even biology students who would be expected to truly appreciate and seek to understand nature fail to see the forest for their focus on the smallest aspects of the trees, the cellular components and processes that can be studied in the laboratory or modeled on a computer. It's considered almost quaint to go about knowing the trees as entities that would teach us their secrets if we know how to listen and observe. But few students develop the ability to observe, to stand or sit and watch. Nothing is happening, they say. Deep in our brains, we have an understanding of why the natural world is so important to our well-being. We must recapture this understanding by resolving to experience the reality of the natural world and its benefits to us all. No matter our circumstances of health, life struggles, economic realities, age, and all the rest. Let us go out into the natural world to look, to feel, to listen. No matter that our first attempts may be tentative and perhaps confusing, nature will cooperate with, it, with our efforts to connect and we will be able to view the world through a sustainable lens. Let us from this moment resolve to become truly mindful of nature. Thank you.